the atonement, the old covenant, but in the New Testament it says you have the remission of sins. Remission means wiped away, washed out, forgotten about, doesn't exist. Yeah. You don't have an expiration date. Amen. You apply the blood of the Old Testament, it was good for a year. You apply the blood of Jesus, it's good forever. Amen. Just like your prayers, your prayers have no expiration date. They're deathless. Yes. Yeah. Come on. Prayers outlive the life of the prayer. You better be praying for your grandkids that aren't born yet, your great-grandkids that aren't born yet, your great-great-grandkids that aren't born yet, because when you die, those prayers will still be working. So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. God bless you and welcome today to More Than Conquerors program. As always, it is a thrill and an honor to be with you. And we're going to continue to talk to you about uh, reporting from our recent Australia trip and then uh, talk to you even about our recent trip to Honduras for a week. And we just saw God do a lot of things this past summer. No, I, mean, I reckon it was so. Just, <laughs> oh my and goodness. we're not through yet. Neither and is we're God. Not through. Yeah, we're not through yet. It's just startling to travel the world, uh, to go to the, you know, the continent the size of the United States, of Australia, sitting out in the South Pacific, surrounded by seven different oceans and seas, and uh, realize you're in the South Pacific, but yet so much of the island or the continent looks like you're in maybe, um, you know, the northern, northwestern part of the United States, all their beautiful trees. They have so many different kinds of trees and flowers, so many different kinds of animals on that continent. Oh, in Australia? In absolutely. Australia. I mean, it's just absolutely it's stunning. It's better found nowhere else in the world. Yeah. I mean, it's just a, a, such an unusual place. And then, of course, as we said last week, we were around some of the finest people on the planet. It was the trip of a lifetime for me. And hopefully we can show you some of these pictures through the programs that we're uh, airing next here over the next several weeks and let you see the beauty of what God has done on this planet and the people that are on the earth right now serving God, doing great, wonderful, magnificent things for the kingdom of God. These are some of the most committed, faithful people that we had the privilege of meeting. Of course, they were all longtime friends of yours, dear, so many dear of them. friends, absolutely. <laughs> Terry went there 42 years ago. And Darwin, I think, uh, just briefly tell, you know, that that 10 and a half hour service, the longest service you've ever had, uh, was in the city of Perth, Australia. It was. With, um, and that's where you met Margaret Court, the great tennis star. And we encourage you to look her up, Google her, Look at all of her accomplishments. We got to, we were privileged to see all her trophies. Oh, we didn't see all of them. We <laughs> they were <laughs> in that room. They're building a room um, in the church there that'll actually be like a tourist stop for people to come in and see uh, the accomplishments that she had in tennis that, and the records that will never be broken. Oh, man or by, woman will never break her records. It will never break her records. It was just a phenomenal time. You know, you know the phrase that people use mm -hmm. today in the sports world mm -hmm. and in some other things too, especially in sports, they use the word GOAT, G-O-A-T, right. meaning greatest of all time. time. Mm -hmm. And uh, she really is the GOAT. Yeah, uh, she really tennis. is. Never... She, and, and the world knows that. The world recognizes that. Right. In fact, Serena Williams, whenever she retired, was complaining about it. And she yeah, said, yeah. I should be the GOAT instead of Margaret Court because, after all, I stopped uh, uh, to have a baby. <laughs> and and my, my response to that is, so did Margaret. She, in fact, retired. That's and then right. came back to tennis. And still went on to win and break records. That's so right. she really is the greatest of all time. And uh, just a, a great lady. Barry, her husband's a great guy. 
And uh, I enjoyed She's the time. Now. I enjoyed the time we spent with them because the only time we really had off right. was one Saturday uh, that we weren't preaching. And uh, and Margaret and Barry spent that day with us and took us around Perth and, it and was took us down to the wonderful. to the, the King's Park. And you know everything's British. You know the yes. British the, the British colonized Australia. Started as a penal colony, That's you know. They right. just sent their prisoners there. Yeah, educate yourself <laughs> and uh, learn. And a few so things. when 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 they had convicts or prisoners in England, they just shipped them to Australia and put them there. And um, but in, but it's a British British influence nation. And um, Barry's very British, and his dad and his brother. His dad and his brother were both premiers, which is like the governor uh, premiers right. of the of the of the province. They don't have states; they have provinces. Of the province of Western Australia. Western Australia. And Western Australia is the largest of all the Australian provinces and pretty much supports all the others. Uh, big landmass, ma- massive landmass. In fact, as a Texan, it, it humiliates me, humbles me to say this, but <laughs> I think Texas will fit into Western Australia. I don't know. Well, is it three times or three six times? times? A lot of times. I might have to look it up now. Barry made sure he told me how many times it <laughs> it, it would it would do it, but yes. it's huge. It's very big. And uh, anyway, so his dad was premier of Western Australia. Then after that, his brother was premier of Western Australia. And Barry right. himself has been in politics and business, big rancher, uh, right. all, all these many many years. And so when I met Margaret, uh, I didn't know who she was or that she was a tennis player. I didn't know anything about tennis. That's Jackie and amazing. I, I took Jackie and my four kids. Right. Uh, to, to Perth to minister uh, at the uh, church there. Right. And the church also had had this the Rama school from Tulsa. Right. And so I always love to do anything for Rama, you know, and I always felt if I'm doing something for Rama, I'm doing something for Brother Hagen. And, uh, and so uh, they asked if I would minister at the church for a week and if I would minister at, um, at, at or, or for, th- for Sunday through Wednesday. And then if I would minister at the Bible school, Bible school while I was there. And I, I, in fact, asked them, I said, I said, okay, I said, how long do I speak to the Bible school students? And they said, just one hour a day. And I said, okay. I said, how many hours a day do they go to school? And right. they said, they said three. And I said, well, if I'm going to speak to them one hour, but they go three hours, right. what are they doing the other two? And they said, well, this week they're listening to Fred Price videos. And I said, well, all due respect to Fred Price, who's a wonderful man of God and my dear friend right. and, and a partner of our ministry. But I said, in all due respect to Fred, uh, if it's video, they can watch those after I'm gone. Right. So give me three hours a day. Yeah, live it in person. And they <laughs> said, you would preach three hours a day to those students? Oh, I said, in a heartbeat. Yeah. You know, and so I had this ring of students for three hours a day, Monday through Friday. And it changed their lives. It's wonderful. Right it absolutely changed their lives. You know, we were in a Bible school. I want to digress sure. here just for a moment. So I digress is so what we seem to do best. We'll try to get back to the original topic. <laughs> What was so unusual, we were in um, Texas here about a year and a half ago, ministering at a church in Lubbock, and they also had a Bible school. And um, it it was absolutely marvelous. They asked you to come in on a Monday night and take the Bible school time, which was three hours. Mm-hmm. And it they was like a break every hour and go to the bathroom or They were supposed to have, but they said, no breaks tonight. If you need to get up and go to the restroom, just get up and go. We don't want to interrupt Brother Terry. And I want to tell all of you, I was there personally. My hungry heart could not hardly digest everything this man of God put out for three solid hours. He sat at a high table with a chair. Uh, of course, and and had his Bible and a notebook there. And he taught for three solid hours, no interruptions. If people had to get up and go to, to the restroom or get a drink of water, anything at all, they just got up one by one in the room and went out and did. Some didn't even move. And Terry taught them for three solid hours the Word of God. And, it, and it, you started out teaching for an hour on um, faith. Surely not. And just taught on faith for a solid hour or a little more, and then the rest of the time he taught on missions and what the and what the purpose of the church is, and that it was to go to the world, and it was absolutely Bible school study, phenomenal, not just information 
but Holy Ghost anointed. And I want to tell you, I mean, it was just, I mean, uninterrupted three solid hours. He can do it. <laughs> and it was, I mean, grab your attention and not let go. And I sat there just mesmerized, if I could say that, that word, total rapt attention given to what was coming out of Terry's mouth to share with those Bible school students. And they still talk about it. We ran into some friends of ours at Brother Copeland's meeting here uh, in uh, Fort Worth. And it was just absolutely tremendous, the, the, the comments and the reports that they got from that. So I want you to put yourself back in 1982, realizing he's teaching Bible school students every day, all day long, you know, for three solid hours in the mornings. And it was just phenomenal. It changed that nation, Terry. Oh, it did. In 1982. They will tell you that. They will yeah, tell they you will that. Yeah, they will tell you that actually, themselves. Actually, Renee, I told the Lord way, way back, way back. Um, I never dreamed I'd get invited to preach anywhere. Right. And certainly not to a Bible school. But I said to the Lord, uh, I said, if I ever get invited to preach at a Bible school, I won't even pray about it. I'll just go. Because I feel like those students deserve, right. need to have a, a minister minister to them out of, out of heart knowledge and right. not just head knowledge. Exactly. Because the bane of most every Bible school in existence today, and I love them all, and they're good ones, but the, the problem they all seem to have is that they'll take a, a student this year right. who's really sharp, right. dresses well, carries themselves well, their speech is well, their comportment is well, a uh, great student. Uh, and then they'll ask them to be a teacher next year. Mm -hmm. So the, the student becomes the teacher never having done it, right. never having lived it. So they take the head knowledge they were taught this year, and now this year, they're, next year, they're a teacher, so they're just preaching head knowledge yet not having ever done it. Most of them have never won a soul, never cast out a devil, never right. healed the sick, raised the dead, right. you know, seen a blind eye, opened a deaf ear, or any of that. Uh, they believe in it, and that's not bad on their part. Right. It's bad on the Bible school's part. Sure. Instead of bringing in ministers that are, are doing it, or have done it, still doing it right now that's in right. the field. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so, live and in person. Yeah. Here you are. So, so... Um, Anyway, so I just told the Lord decades ago, I said, I I'll go because those students deserve to hear somebody that's cast out devils, that's raised the dead, that's healed the sick, right. you know, that, that's preached the gospel to the poor, that's, that's done these things and are still doing it. Right. And so uh, uh, I just pour into Bible schools when I'm there. I, I mean, I just literally give them whatever I've got. You know, and so that school in Lubbock, uh, I was honored to do that. The, the video, the audio of it was poor. If the audio of it wasn't so poor, we'd produce it and, right. and let you guys have it. But so what I, but we do, we do have it. So what I think we'll do is just transcribe it and maybe make it into a book or a manual right. because it's it's full of tremendous information. Yet the right. audio is not. I don't think the audio is good quality enough to 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 reproduce and send out. But anyway. Uh, there in Perth, uh, I had a whole week. I had five days, and that was 1982. And most Rama people from from Australia, most of them will tell you, and I've talked to many of them over the years, including this trip we were just on. Yes, most of them will tell you that that 82 class, that class of 82, uh, that graduating class of 1982, was the most prolific class they've ever had, mm -hmm. the most missionaries going to a foreign country they've right. ever had, the most miracle ministries mm -hmm. that they've ever had, because several things Jackie and I taught while we were there and just demonstrated while we were there right. changed their lives. Right. Uh, even me taking my wife and four kids, uh, the, real the, the staff told then, back in 82, mm -hmm. told me then, they said, nobody does that. <laughs> nobody does that. They said, they, they said, we teach these kids, you have to the wife and kids stay home. The husband goes to be a missionary. Right. And, of course, they say the same thing in, in American Bible schools, some right. great Bible schools right. that I just totally disagree with. And uh, and so Jackie and I would take the kids and were out with us. And so it was such a testimony to them in 1982 that Jackie and all four kids were no, there for a week. No, that's right. Uh, and, and we asked nothing for expenses. Right. You know, that was one of the big the big things that just shocked them, too. I mean, everything yeah. about that meeting just shocked people. Well, and that's the that is is learned behavior that Terry and Jackie did way back then that you you take your children with you Absolutely. and that if God can provide for one, he can provide for five more. And that the word of faith works, 
then it has to work for the preacher. <laughs> you have to go, you have to actually go and teach faith while you're demonstrating faith. Oh, absolutely. And that's what you and Jackie did by taking your children. And you were over there like you were in New Zealand for what, four or five weeks? Three five four? weeks, I believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She always had this rule back, back in those days that if I was going to be gone over two weeks, I would right. take Jackie. because I'm not going to be away from my wife for more than two weeks. Right. And if I was going, gone for three weeks or more, I'd take the kids. Right. I'm not going to be away. I don't want my kids growing up saying, uh, Daddy was never here. We never had a daddy because he, right. you know, he loved Jesus, so he left us. And so I didn't want that. And so, uh, so when they first called me and asked me in 1982 right. uh, if I would come minister, uh, I said, yeah, let me pray about it. And I prayed about it and called them and said, yeah, I'll come. And they said, okay, what, what do you require? I said, well, you mean what do I require? They said, well, you know, what kind of an offering do you require? What kind of expenses do you require? I said, I don't require anything. And they said, what? And I said, well, I don't require anything. You ask me to come, I pray about it. If God says come, I go. Right. And whatever you do for me, if you do anything at all, that's, that's, that's between you and God. That's not, yes. that's not me. And they said, we never heard of such a thing. They said, we're flabbergasted. They said, you can't imagine the, the ministries, the big name ministries in, in America that we've called and asked to come. And they said, well, we want first class airline tickets. We want, we want yeah. the best hotels. We want a guaranteed uh, offering of whatever, $25,000 or something back then. And I said, well, I can't speak for them. That's none of my business. I said, but I don't do that. I said, I will come. And if you want to give me an, an offering, love yeah. offering, if you want to pay any expenses, you help yourself. That's between you and God. Yeah. I, I, I work for God. Yeah. Well, the, and, and that, I want to say again here, that leaves the man of God with dignity. That leaves the family in dignity because Terry and Jackie were believing God to meet all their needs and the children and take them with them. And the them. bills back home. And the bills back home as a representative of what they were going to teach was the word of faith. Absolutely. They were not going as beggars. They were not going codependent on, golly, y'all got to give us an offering or we'll, you know, can't fly back home. We're going only buying a one-way ticket. I've, I've done that. <laughs> you know, and and they were going in the dignity and it left them. Brother Osteen always said this, you know, we've quoted many times. We're not beggars, we're believers. No, that's right. And that we would go as believers, standing on the word of God, serving a God that is more than enough to take care of every need. And you had to do that by faith and leaving, knowing, you know, God was going to have to take care of it all. Stepping out oh, on faith well, and provide the meals, provide the hotels, provide everything. Transportation. As, uh, transportation as Hotel. a testimony to the people of Australia, Absolutely. to the people of New Zealand when you went there Absolutely. as well. Well, and you know me 50 years, so you've right. known that's true of me. Right. And we've been married 10 years. You know, it's still true of me. I don't yes, ask anybody right. for anything. You know, uh, we <laughs> Terry always says, uh, I'll say this is going to cost so and so and so and so, or we need this much money this week, this month, whatever, for this project, whatever we're going to do. And he'll say, praise God. The Lord's God's got lots of money, lots of money, and he shares with us. Yes, he does. <laughs> yes, he does. He does have lots of money, and he does share with and us. And he does share with us. That's and we right. just came back from this trip. We didn't ask him for a dime. Didn't right. ask him for anything. Right. And um, and so uh, anyway, they said, "You you can't imagine the ministers we've asked. You, are you kidding? No, you you don't require anything." I said, "No, right. I don't require anything." And um, they said, "Well, we'll do you the best we can." And they said, "We'll we'll we'll get your hotel, and we'll do this." And so when I hung up the phone from him, I got to talking to Jackie, and I said, "Darling, you know, I, my rule is if I'm gone for." Over three weeks, I take the kids. I said, I, I, I want to take the kids on this trip. And she said, well, yeah, I guess you're right. We don't leave right. the kids for five weeks. And right. uh, and so uh, in a day or two, I called them back in Australia. Right. Right. And I said, hey, guys, I said, um, Jackie and I were talking, and we, we were uh, in agreement. We're, we're bringing our four kids. And I said, so would you do me a favor of just booking us a second room? Right. And it got so quiet on, on the phone, <laughs> just quiet, crickets. Shock. And I said, hello, are you still there? And they said, uh, 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 Brother Terry? I said, yes. They said, um, you know, we're going to do the best we can for you. And, you know, and of course you're bringing Sister Jackie and we'll, we'll do the best we can. But said, you know, with your whole family, four kids. I said, wait, wait, time out. I said, did I ask you for anything? I'm not asking for money. I'm not asking you to pay for it. I'm just saying... Since you're booking my hotel, right. you know where it is. I don't know where it is. Just call them and get a second room. Right. And I said, if you want me to, give me the name of it, and I'll call them. But I said, you know, I'll pay for it. But you just, just you know, and they just were flabbergasted about that. So then right. we came, 
And then all those students that they had been telling you can't take your family with you, right. they saw that I brought a wife and four children. Right. And that just ministers. So they so out of that 82 class, they say more ministries went in ministry with their family than ever before. And uh, I mean, just just testimony after testimony after testimony after testimony of that right. meeting 42 years ago. And so in that week of teaching them three hours a day, I taught strong, heavy missions. Right. I mean, serious missions. Right. And uh, uh, so many went to the mission fields out of that. So many went to the mission fields Thank out of that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, amen. And so uh, anyway, it's just it just left a good taste in everybody's mouth. But then on the Wednesday night, which they call the Wednesday night, the Holy Ghost fell. And you don't even know you're living your own history. You know, no, that this no. is going to be 42 years no, later. No, I don't know this is going to be a testimony. 42 years later. I never go into anything thinking, boy, the this is going to be a good testimony. Boy, this is going to write a book, you know. Yeah. I mean, when the pitch hitchhiker was shooting at me, I wasn't thinking, <laughs> boy, this is going to be a good book. This is going to be a good testimony. I just think, what do I do to stay alive? I got to use the yeah. word and the name and the right. blood and the covenant right. and the power of the Holy Ghost. Right. Then I got to do it again, do it again right. until I win. And, and then later you say, oh, that was faith. Oh, that, that, that's that's a testimony. Right. But anyway, uh, so that Wednesday night, I just started preaching, and the Holy Ghost just started falling. And, and there's about fifteen hundred people there. It's a, it's a big auditorium with with wooden floors and those old metal folding chairs. Right. So uh, I'd walk to one side of the platform to say something. Like fifty people over here just fall out of their chairs. I mean, way at the back, <laughs> not the front of the room, way at the back. This is and I thought, and, and those chairs would bang, clang, clang, clang. I mean, yeah. 50 people falling out of their chairs. Hallelujah. And I thought, dear God, what what's happening? God. So I'd turn around, I'd walk over the other side of the platform, I'd say something to that, that bam, 50 people over there and fall out of their chairs. And it was just, it's like, I didn't know what to do. And so I just kept preaching and preaching and start praying for the sick and and, and that sort of thing. And, and uh, you know, back in the 50s, back in the 60s and 70s, it was real popular with women's aglow and full gospel ministry men's and different ones to uh, uh, to if to measure people's legs to see if right. they had a shorter leg and and let God grow it out. I used to call it. I used to say it was it was, it was charismatic parlor games because right. everybody did it. Right. You know, and, and I didn't do it much because I just thought, oh, everybody does that. It's just you know, right. it's it's fun. But but unless it's a real physical handicap. Right. You know, then I usually wouldn't do it. I mean, if it was a real physical handicap, I'd pray God to do a miracle. Yes. But otherwise, just the kind of adjusting back and forth, you know, yeah. uh, I, I didn't do much. But that particular night, people came up with back problems, and the Lord said, measure their legs. And I said, Lord, I don't do that. You know, and he said, measure their legs. Mm -hmm. So I set them down in chairs and, and measured their legs. And then I got up, and they just sit there with their legs out. And I said, you can get up. And they said, I can't. And I mean, even young ladies, 20 years old, right. 30 years old, uh, right. teenagers, just sit there just demurely with their legs, just straight out like this, just, I mean, for hours. Well, one of and the a people, trained athlete, when they can't do that. And that that was so cool because one of the people there, I, I, I need to go back and check the name, but one of the people in Margaret Court's church came up to us and said she was like that, yeah. that night. And she said, God just did such a miracle in my body that night. Oh, absolutely. And she said, I couldn't put my legs down for two hours. Yeah, and they just sat there just so calmly <laughs> looking around. And a trained athlete would just be shaking and sweating. Yeah, and, right. I mean, you can't do that. Right. And so men were doing it. Women were doing it. Kids were kids were doing it. Yeah, children. And, and I just had them sitting all over the place like that. And then somebody came out and said, my, my, back, my shoulders and my back. And the Lord said, measure their arms. I said, well, put your arms out here like that. So they put their arms out like that. And, you know, it, so, it, so it grew out. And, and I said, okay, and they couldn't bring their arms down. So I had people right. sitting all over the place with their legs out, and people sitting all over, they just standing there like this. They couldn't move, and then people falling in the floor, getting slain in the spirit, and couldn't get up. They're just like cordwood everywhere. I mean, it was just the strangest thing. And so toward the end of the service, or toward the net of, of the normal end time, this lady came up to me, which was Margaret Cord, and I didn't know who she was. I just knew she was a... Uh, one of the older students. Right. You know, she was retired from tennis and it's very famous, world famous, but I didn't know it. And she said, Brother Terry, she said, my, my right shoulder is higher than my left. My right hip is higher than my left. My spine's got a double scoliosis curve and I'm in excruciating back pain all the time. And that's all those years of playing tennis, but I didn't know what it was from, you know. Right. And I, I just reached up to touch her and never did make contact. I just reached up to touch her. I said, I said, well, sister, the, the Jesus needs to do an overhaul on you. And I reached up to touch her, and God knocked her down. The Holy Ghost knocked her down. And she is down for hours, three hours. And uh, But so was everybody else, so we didn't pay any attention. They right. just stacked like cordwood everywhere. It was just the wildest sensation. Anyway, we're about out of time. Uh, but the next day, she called me from 
the doctor's office and said, I've got the old x-rays and I've got the x-rays you took today. I'm, my shoulders are level, my hips are level, my spine's straight. I'm well, that was a creative miracle and so many others like that uh, over and over and over. And you heard those testimonies firsthand. Well, and seeing Margaret today, she's 82. She and Barry are hands-on pastoring that church. Tremendous Her pastors. stamina is phenomenal of how she works and, and pastors, administrates that church. We drove with her every day we were there, and she was just so sharp and alert with everything, going everywhere in such peace on this woman. Yeah, I mean, God has done great things for her in her life, she oh, yeah. and her entire family. Well, our time is gone for today. I hope you pre recognize and receive from just the sacredness of what God has done all through your life, all through Terry's life, to, to be able to stay, sit here today and tell you again one more time, you are more, more than, than conquerors. conquerors. Bye-bye. When I first got out of the Army, I went straight to, the, to Mexico, to the mission fields. And uh, I, I spent time with a missionary named Wayne Myers. Wayne's 100 years old this year, still preaching. And I ran into a lifestyle that absolutely pricked my heart, grabbed hold of me. I saw a, a man that was living to give. I mean, he, he, was, he was living his life on planet Earth with the purpose of blessing somebody, lifting somebody, embracing somebody. And I saw that, I said, ah, this is it. I, this is the, I'm, I'm embracing this. And I, right there, made a vow to God and to myself, and I said, this is how I will live the rest of my life, living to give, because it's the very nature of God. So I wanna encourage you to hook up with that same lifestyle of giving. I mean, embrace it, living to give. And you can give to your local church, you can give to other ministries. I've partnered with ministries since around the world since I was a teenager, and I tell you, God's blessed me for it. I wouldn't trade it. You can also partner with us. We're always happy to em embrace partners. We pray for them every day. But as long as you hook up with that concept, that lifestyle, of God living to give, then it'll be a blessing to others and it'll certainly be a blessing to you. Not only once, I've been shot at a number of times in a number of places around the world and every time God has miraculously saved my life. This is, this is God's Word. So John, it's, it's not just John talking, it's not just the Holy Ghost yes. talking. God is talking. I started talking out loud to myself. Sure. And I would say, no, you're not going to think like that. Sure. No, you're not going to be worried about that. That's a worry thought. And I'm not going to think that worry thought. That's a fear thought. And you know, anytime I've done that, I've won. Anytime I didn't do it, I lost. <laughs> because what's happening is it's it's exalting itself. It's self. It's trying to control. The conquerors, uh, they've just done in German. Sending lots of money to orphans. We yes, just sent another uh, $8,000 out. Eating up the stories that he would tell of his missions and ministry, and it would build my faith.